So I haven't done this sort of thing in a while, so I might be rusty. Uh, but what I'd like to do with you is to give you um, a proof. Yeah, I don't often get to do proofs, but I want to give you a proof that um, if a population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and remember we define Hardy-Weinberg as the genotype ratios, as genotype frequencies of a non-evolving population, and, and we'll be using P's and Q's where P is the allele frequency of big A, Q is the allele frequency of little a. Um, under random mating, with, uh, after one generation of random mating, the genotype frequencies will be exactly the same. They will not be any different from the Hardy-Feinberg equilibrium genotype frequencies that we started off with. Okay, so the first thing you want to remember is what the genotype frequencies are going to be uh, for a non-evolving population that's at Hardy and Weinberg. And of course, the allele frequency of big A homozygotes, big A, big A, is P squared, or the allele frequency of big A squared. The uh, genotype frequency of the heterozygotes will be 2PQ, and Q squared is going to be the expected uh, equilibrium genotype frequency for the little a homozygotes. Okay. <clears throat> and so now, under random mating, basically, if uh, you know, by definition, random mating means that uh, the uh, likelihood of mating with any other member of the population um, is uh, about the same. Or uh, think of thinking about it this way, the likelihood of anybody mating with a big A, big A homozygote would be exactly equal to the frequency in which you're likely to encounter them, which would be P squared. The likelihood of your mating with a heterozygote would be 2P cubed, and the likelihood of your mating with a little a homozygote would be Q squared. Okay. And we could set up um, we could set up the outcome of random mating by setting up what you might call a, a, a marriage market. Now, this is something that's different. It might look a little bit similar to um, a Punnett square, but it's really different. And so in a population, if you are a big A, big A, this is you, your likelihood of getting a big A, big A homozygote as a, uh, as a mate would be equal to P squared. And your likelihood of getting a heterozygote as a mate would be 2P cubed. And your likelihood of getting a little a, little a homozygote as a mate would be Q squared. And exactly equal to their frequency in the population. Which basically means that the likelihood of your actually being big A, big A is P squared. And so the likelihood of, of A mating being big A, big A cross with big A, big A would be exactly equal to P squared times P squared, or P raised to the fourth power. <coughs> Got that? And so the likelihood of you being big A, big A, and your spouse being big A, little a, uh, in, th in other words, ending up with big A, big A, cross with big A, little a, would be equal exactly to 2P cubed times Q, okay? you know, this times that. <clears throat> but remember, that's not the only way that we're going to get big A, big A cross with big A, little a. We could also have this situation over here. Uh, at a, There's a, a, a 2PQ likelihood that you are a heterozygote. <clears throat> and if that's the case, you've got a P squared chance of mating with a big A, big A homozygote. And so we have another big A, big A cross with big A, little a mating on this side, in which the likelihood is going to be the same p squared times 2p cubed, which is going to be 2p cubed times q. Okay, with me so far? Okay, so if we fill out the table, your likelihood of being big A, big A, with a, your spouse being little a, big a, little a, little a, in other words, a big A, big A cross with little a, little a <coughs> mating, that's going to equal to p squared q squared. And similarly over here, We'll have big A, big A cross with little a, little a would be Q square, P square, but I'm going to be going ahead and putting it in the same order. I'll put the P values first. Okay. The likelihood that both partners are heterozygotes um, 
is going to be, well, you, know, you have to be heterozygote and your partner has to be heterozygote. So that would be uh, uh, a heterozygote cross heterozygote mating. And that's going to occur at 2pq times 2pq. So that's going to be occurring at a likelihood of 4p square q square. Uh, this other mating would be between a little a homozygote and a big a little a uh, would be, uh, well, first of all, the mating would be a heterozygote cross with a little a little a, and the frequency of that would be 2p times q raised to the third power. Same thing that's going to be occurring over here, heterozygote cross with a little a little a, and a likelihood of 2p q raised to the third power. <coughs> And finally, the likelihood of both partners being little a, little a, in other words, or little a, little a, cross with little a, little a. That's going to be the homozygote, homozygote cross uh, is going to occur at a frequency of q raised to the fourth power. Okay. And so that's, that's the entire range of possibilities. Okay. There aren't any other matings that are going to be taking place. And we know that um, if we have, if we have big A, big A, cross with big A, big A, then 100% of the offspring are going to be big A, big A, right? So given that information, we could say, well, um, this type of mating is going to be occurring P raised to the fourth power of a time. So basically, we have P raised to the fourth power uh, times 1.00. There's going to be this many uh, this is going to be the frequency uh, or the uh, proportion, the fraction of big A, big A homozygotes in the next generation that are the progeny of big A, big A to cross with big A, big A. Okay. Now, if we have big A, big A cross with big A, little a, we know you know, this is where you need to do a Punnett square, but if you do the Punnett square, you know that 50% are going to be big A, big A, and 50% are going to be heterozygote. Right, and this is going to be taking place. Ooh, it looks like it's going to be taking place to p q, you know, p cubed q uh, times two because we have two of those. So this is going to be taking place for p q, no, sorry, p cubed times q. That's going to be the likelihood of there being this type of, of mating, and half of the offspring of these matings are going to be big A, big A homozygotes, and uh, half are going to be uh, heterozygous. Okay, so which means that we'll have uh, this many big A, big A's from the first meeting. We'll have um, four P cubed Q. Uh, half of that is going to be big A, big A. So we'll have two P cubed Q uh, of the offspring are going to be big A, big A, and two P Q Q. The other half of the meetings the other half of the four p cubed q matings are going to be heterozygous. <coughs> okay, we just have to, you know, we've basically uh, taken care of that box, we've taken care of these two boxes, and now we want to take care of the two boxes on the, on the outside, this one and that one. We know that if we have um, big A, big A cross with little a, little a, I know that 100% of the offspring here are going to be big A, little a, uh, and that's going to be taking place, let's see, um, each of these matings, we have, we have the big A, big A, little a, little a matings over here and over there, so a total of 2 P squared Q squared. <coughs> 2 P squared Q squared is going to be the, the overall frequency of matings between the two different opposite homozygotes, which basically means we'll be having 2 P squared Q squared of the time we'll be getting big A little a's. Okay. And we only have three, we have four more boxes to go through. Okay, so if we have heterozygotes, uh, if we have heterozygotes, uh, crossing with heterozygotes, uh, this is the one that's probably the most complicated, big A little a cross with big A little a. <coughs> this happens for p squared q squared of the time, for p squared q squared is the frequency of matings between heterozygotes, and we know that of this group, 25% are going to be big A, big A homozygotes, 50% are 
are expected to be heterozygotes and 25% are going to be little homozygotes. Which basically uh, allows us to say, well, you know, of these four P squared, Q squared, uh, one fourth of them are going to be heterozygotes. So this means we'll be, no, sorry, one fourth of them are going to be homozygotes, goats, big A. So I could just uh, multiply this times this and I'll say, well, P squared, Q squared, of the time are going to get big A, big A offspring from those matings, from the matings between heterozygotes, to P squared, Q squared is going to be the likelihood of our getting heterozygotes from that, those matings. And P squared, Q squared, again, we're doing four P squared, Q squared, 25% of that are going to give us little a, little a homozygotes. Okay. Now, uh, two more matings to cover. One of these matings is the, uh, the matings between big A, little a, the heterozygotes, and the little a, little a homozygotes. Uh, these matings are going to be taking place, looks like 4p cubed, you know, sorry, 4p q cubed. Okay, so I'll take that information, scroll back down and say, well, okay, 4p q cubed the time will have big A little a crossed with little a little a. And uh, when this mating takes place, we have 50% big A little a and 50% little a little a. And so that means we'll have about 2p q cubed, so cubed. Of the time, we'll have heterozygotes. 2p q cubed of the time, we'll have little a homozygotes. And that takes care of all the offspring from those matings. So we talked about these guys already. We covered those. We covered these guys. We covered these guys. And the only one left we, we have to talk about is those q raised to the fourth power matings between little a homozygotes, right? So Q raised to the fourth power, uh, that's the frequency of our getting little a, little a cross with little a, little a in our overall marriage market. And when this happens, 100% of them are going to be little a, little a, <coughs> the offspring that is. And so we've got a total of Q raised to the fourth power, little a, little a's in the offspring population. And so now what we can do is we can tally things up. We can say, okay, well, we've got um, for big A, big A. So for, I, wanna, I need to, to write this down. So for big A, big A, I've got P raised to the fourth power here. So big A, big A is in the next generation. P raised to the fourth power. Okay, I've got two P cubed Q. I've got P square Q square. And that's it. Okay. Those three places are the only places where I'm going to get the big A homozygotes. All right. Now we've got to tally up all the, uh, all the uh, offspring that are going to be um, heterozygous. So we've got a 2p cubed q. Okay. I've got, I did that one. I've got 2p square q square. So 2p cubed q, 2p square q. So I got another 2p square q square. And then I've got the 2p q cubed. <coughs> and that accounts for all of the heterozygotes. So now we've got to figure out, well, where are all the little a homozygotes? And there are three here. We've got uh, um, little a homozygotes. I've got these guys right here, the p squared, q squared. I've got these guys here, the 2p q cubed. And I've got the q raised to the fourth power. 
and that accounts for all of the offspring in the next generation. <coughs> now here comes the fun part, okay? Um, you ready for this? Okay, so let's reanalyze these equations one at a time. Let's take this equation here, call this equation one. Um, this is going to be the frequency of the G, the G big A big A in the next generation. And this is going to equal P raised to the fourth power plus 2P cubed Q plus no, it's just P square Q square. And now one thing you can do here is to factor out P squared. Everything, everything you, this is easy to factor. This is algebra. So if you take out P squared from this equation, you get P squared plus 2PQ, right? Plus Q squared. And guess what? P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared is equal to 1. How do I know that? Well, uh, remember that we only have two alleles, and you've already agreed with me that P plus Q is equal to 1. Okay, And if we do a simple binomial expansion, you to take the square of both sides. If you expand this side, you'll end up with P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared is equal to 1 squared, which is exactly equal to 1. So basically here we're saying that this is equal to, well, P times 1, or sorry, P squared times 1 and this is going to equal p squared, okay? In essence, uh, the genotype frequency started off at p squared, which is where it was at equilibrium, Hardy-Weinberg uh, at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and it's still at p squared after a generation of random mating. Okay. That's the first step. Uh, the second one I think is going to be uh, easy, uh, is also very easy. You can take this one, solve this step number two, say, well, the allele, the uh, genotype frequency of little a homozygotes in the next generation is going to equal <coughs> p squared q squared plus 2p q cubed plus q raised to the fourth power. And that is also equal to, we can take out the q's, let me take out the q squared. Q squared is going to equal to, hmm, uh, sorry, two q squared times the quantity p squared plus 2pq plus q squared. And again, this is the same you know, binomial expansion. <coughs> this is the same binomial expansion that we had over here, and this is going to equal q squared. Genotype frequencies have not changed by even a tiniest fraction. And um, and you could do the, the rest by subtraction, but I suppose that if you really wanted to, uh, to take this out, let's see if we could do that. Okay. Um, let's do the third part of this equation. The uh, third part of the equation, the genotype frequency for the big A, little a, the heterozygotes, is going to equal 2 p q cubed, two, no sorry, 2 p cubed q plus 2 p squared q squared plus 2 p squared q squared, so in other words, two plus 4 p squared q squared. Plus 2 p q cubed. And guess what we can do here? We can take out from all these uh, from all these terms. We can take out two p q. And what are we going to be left with? Well, we would have p squared. We would have two p q. And we would have q squared. And again, we're ending up with the same binomial. Sorry, q squared, not q cubed. Uh, we end up with the same binomial expansion. This is going to be 2pq. Basically, uh, the genotype frequencies that we started off with, which were p squared, 2pq, and q squared, we undergo this kind of massive equation, uh, this massive marriage market, and uh, determine at the end of the process we end up with exactly the same 
genotype frequencies that we started off with. It's basically demonstrating for any values of p and q, as long as p plus q is equal to 1, that uh, the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium genotype frequencies really are equilibrium. There's no change from generation to generation. Quad erat demonstratum.